The mascot for the Pan Am Games in Toronto is a porcupine. You'll meet him in just a couple of days, in fact. But that might be more fitting than organizers first expected and realized given the prickly relationship people in this city have been having with the event. But you cannot say that about Toronto's mayor, John Tory. He's already taking the gold for a civic leadership in the final runoff, being a big booster for these games and providing these events really are more of a marathon than a sprint. The games are almost here and he will be playing host to a big part of the world. So it's fitting that our first guest, as we begin our marathon coverage session, should be the mayor of Toronto. John Tory, welcome back to the program. Nice to see you on this. Since we welcome the world, or a good part of the world now, uh, let me ask you this. Is Toronto ready to welcome the Pan Am visitors? Yes, we are, Heather, and uh, I'm glad you didn't introduce me as the mascot, but no. uh, I thought you were getting to that. <laughs> no. uh, you know, what you read about in a lot of these multi-sport games is that the city isn't ready, the buildings aren't ready, right. their places for competition aren't ready. In this case, we are. Uh, the Athletes' Village, uh, we just saw. Uh, the sports facilities, I've seen some of them they're magnificent and they're ready some of them have been in use by the public for months so that that's part of the legacy of the games but it's also I guess part of that uh, you know getting it ready and making sure it works properly so yes the city is ready. the city is ready what about buzz in the city you have been critical if you will in the past saying that Toronto was a little bit too pessimistic about these games are you getting the sense that there is some excitement that they're ready to embrace the games in the city. I think the only sport that we're not uh, playing in the Pan Am games is sort of moaning and groaning and, and, <laughs> and Toronto uh, you know on a regular basis would be uh, qualifying for a gold medal in that but you know what I think I've seen myself over the weekend I went to a couple of the torch arrival ceremonies in different neighborhoods uh, and I've seen some of the events as the week has gone on we've seen as the coverage of as focused more on the athletes actually arriving. I think, yes, there's a buzz building now. I don't think this is all that unusual. This is the highest ticket presale in the history of Pan Am. So when people talk about the ticket presales, which have been rising steadily, mm -hmm. it's really a, a, a matter of people focusing on the glass being half empty as opposed to three quarters full. And things like that are just happening now, and people in town are, are getting uh, excited about it, and I think it's going to be great. The complaint thus far, the biggest one, has been traffic. Let's talk about that. We've had a week now of the HOV lanes being in operation. From what you've seen, better or worse than you expected, and how does that affect your assessment of how bad it will get at the peak of the games? In the early days, it was a little bit worse than I expected, uh, and I hope that this being a week when lots of people take their holidays anyway in the mm -hmm. summer, uh, and it being a time when we have encouraged people, as we would continue to do, to take public transit and to maybe shift their hours of work a little bit with the uh, cooperation, I hope, of employers, um, I think it will be, um, you know, it'll be what people would expect when you're going to have a major event that does close some of these lanes, which is a requirement of the organization that puts on these games uh, from afar, I mean, not the local organization, um, you're going to see some impact but I think it's going to be fine we will adjust as other cities have around the world when they had big events like this you did ask the province though to reconsider the three-person per vehicle minimum to go back to two it refused has the province done all it could should have to make to minimize the traffic impact for Toronto. We're on a positive bent this oh, week. So, okay. you know what? I haven't heard anything from what I said last week right. about them reconsidering that carpool definition or the HOV definition. But the bottom line is uh, people will adapt. People will make their own judgments about what was done. But the bottom line is we've got to move ahead and have these games and make them a success. And I think if people can change their behavior just a little bit uh, to maybe alter their hours a bit or take the transit uh, to get to work, um, we'll be fine. The games will go on. People will be enthused. And uh, that's what's important. You do have a meeting set for today taxi drivers and uber any concern at all about some sort of they've been having an ongoing dispute in toronto is there any concern about some form of taxi protest at all during the games to draw attention to the issue i can only hope that everybody in the city whether it's uber or taxis right. or anybody else uh, takes a positive attitude and says look toronto is on display this week through the cbc at home and through uh, other networks around the world uh, and and we don't want to have a blemish on our reputation of putting on these games well because of some uh, you know perfectly legitimate business dispute if i can call it that that exists in the city and so i hope Hope people will realize that we'll work away at that issue, but that we've got a very big international event going on uh, that's going to be seen all over the place, and we don't want to reflect badly on our city as we uh, as we put that ga the games on. Securing the city for this very big international event, are you confident that Toronto police preparedness is where it needs to be at this point? Yes, uh, I've talked to the chief as recently as Saturday, and I'm confident uh, he's a person that knows this area of the business very well, and that uh, the police service, working with other uh, people involved in security 
majority uh, in the country are uh, ready to put these games on. You have to be vigilant, and you never know in this world, unfortunately, what's going to go on. But I think they're as prepared as uh, any police service could possibly be. We're going be. to be speaking to them on Wednesday. Wednesday, our theme is security. But it's interesting. You talk to people, and again, not to delve into negatives of the past today, but there is still a concern that, you know, international event, Toronto police, what if something goes wrong? Could it be G20 revisited? What do you think? Well, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the focus security-wise this week will be on the fact that there's an economic summit accompanying yes. these games and a climate change summit as well. Uh, and that brings out some of the people who want to protest this or that. Uh, all I can say is that I'm confident, first of all, lessons are always learned from past events. And secondly, that our police service is an excellent police service that will do a good job uh, keeping Toronto safe and keeping everybody that's here safe and including uh, athletes and visitors and people to coming to summit meetings and that we'll, uh, we'll be fine. Okay. I hope to have you back at the end of the games and we'll talk legacy for the city. But I, as w before you go today, one of the things that some people hope will be part of the Pan Am Games is to set the stage for a future Olympic host city situation for Toronto, that this will be a setting of the stage or a dress rehearsal, if you will. Personally, are you in favor of Toronto hosting an Olympics, a Summer Olympics? Personally, I'm in favor of getting through these games that start <laughs> uh, this week and making sure they're a smashing success and not getting ahead of myself or getting anybody ahead of themselves in talking about the future. I there think these international, been any formal discussions. these international events provide deadlines uh, for us uh, to get things done. And we've got things done. We've got a new neighborhood uh, built that's going to be the Athletes Village for now. We've got a train to the airport. We've got various sports facilities, and that's a great success for the city. But uh, the future will leave to the future and we'll get these games done first and take it from there. Although the IOC president, I know Thomas Bach is in town tomorrow. I'm going to be interviewing tomorrow. Will you be speaking to him about that I possibility hope so. They're for looking at, at us getting together to have a chat, but we would do that in any event and I would just say that we'll get these games on and I tell him the same thing. We'll get these games uh, done successfully and uh, hopefully and I'm, I know we can and uh, take it from there as to what we do in the future, but uh, I think these things do provide deadlines for people to get some things done in the city, so uh, you know, they're not uh, they're, they're not uh, something that you'd sneer at. I know you have your tickets. You made that clear. You bought I, I your did. tickets. You, you know, bought because the uh, I, I get a pass to go to some of the official <laughs> events, but if I want tickets to take my family, I have to buy them, which is right. And you did. And I bought my tickets to the 100-meter uh, final, and I'm going to be buying some more that come on sale uh, this morning. Even so today. we'll work on that. Wednesday, July the 22nd for that 100-meter final. All right, great to see you. And listen, I hope the games do pan out as you hope. Focus on the positive, and we'll see you again at the end of these games. Thanks, Elliot.